Right, another way you can use the ideal gas law is when you're given two or more uh, conditions and you change some of the variables. Right, for example, if you have one set of pressure, volume, amount, and temperature, so you have another set of pressure, volume, amount, and temperature. All right, rewrite the, um, both equations and set them equal to R. So for this pressure, volume, amount, and temperature for a gas, it's going to be equal to R. For this other set of conditions, it's also going to be equal to the same thing. So if they're both equal to R, they're going to be equal to each other. And you get what some people refer to as the combined gas law. And from this, you can get, um, for example, some of the other gas laws you may find in your Jin Kim book or you may have talked about in class. All right, for example, all right, let's say you have a sample of gas with a pressure of one atmosphere and a volume of 500 milliliters. All right, you compress the volume to 325 milliliters at a constant temperature. All right, what would be the pressure? Right, some may recognize this automatically as an example of Boyle's law, which deals with pressure and volume. And there's an equation for Boyle's law that says P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Well, if you didn't know this this equation you know, from memory, but you're able to derive the combined gas law from the ideal gas law. Remember, they tell you that the temperature is constant, so that means T1 and T2 are the same thing. If they're the same thing, then they effectively drop out of the equation. And since you're not told that you added or took away any amount of gas, you can assume N1 and N2 are the same thing as well. So, again, if they're the same value, they drop out of the equation. So you can see what you have left ends up being Boyle's law. So again you compare what you're given to the equation you think you need. All right, we're given a pressure and a volume. We're given another volume and we want to find the pressure for that volume. So again, we know just like before, we know three of the four variables, so we can you know, solve for the fourth. So you plug in 1.5 atmospheres, volumes 500 milliliters, and B2, 325 milliliters. So solving for P2, you get 2.3 atmospheres. And you can do this for any similar example where you're given um, a gas at certain conditions and you change one or more of those variables. Uh, like for example, let's say you take an amount of gas and you hold the pressure constant and you hold the amount constant, again if those two variables are remain constant they can drop out of the equation and you're left with V1 over T1 equal V2 over T2. You may recognize that as Charles's law which relates volume and temperature. 
All right, one other thing about using the combined gas law, or any of these other types of gas laws that we mentioned, like Boyle's and Charles, right, when you're working with the idea, combined gas law and some of the offshoots of it, all right, one thing to keep in mind is units, which you should do for really any equation you work with. All right, you may notice here that I didn't bother converting this to liters because the milliliter unit dropped out and so you were left with a unit of pressure. All right. You can pretty much do that for all of these variables, all four except temperature. All right, since temperature, your two main units are Celsius and Kelvin, unlike the other types of unit conversions we typically do, such as uh, pressure and volume, those usually involve uh, converting by multiplying or dividing. Since this one involves a conversion via an addition, then you've got to pick one or the other for these calculations. And typically, when you're working with this combined gas law, all right, pressure volume and moles or amount can be in any um, unit you want. Temperature has to be in Kelvin though.